Okay, this is the fourth tutorial on decision making. So most C++ programs are going to involve some form of decision making. So one example might be is checking whether a number is odd or even. Another may be if a number is in a certain range or even if a user has entered a certain string or character. So how is a decision made? Well, decisions are made with if statements in the following general form. So it starts with if something. So the condition or conditions are a logical or what would be a logical set of conditions. It could be just one. So that would make use of the logical operators equal, not equal, and, or, etc. So as you can see, conditions provide a true-false result. And an if statement will only work if the condition proves true. If it proves false, the if block will not be active. So some brief examples is if x is equal to 3, see out a message, it's 3, something simple. Another one could be if x mod 2 doesn't equal 1. That's another way of saying it's an even number. Or you can say if a character just called ch is equal to a or the character is equal to a, right? Uh, you can say it's a and a vowel. Now, you don't always have to say C out. You could do actions on a variable of variables, but just for the purpose of these examples, you could see that it's a C out statement. So there's another block called an if else if. So say that you had more conditions to check in a given program. You can do that with an if else if statement block looking as follows. So you still have your if condition, the code for it, whatever it is, but now you have an else if condition, code for the else if. You could have another one, etc., etc. So there's no limit to how many conditions you can check for. So some brief examples of this, you can still say if x equals 3, see out it's 3, else if x mod 5 is 2, something, right, just as an example. You could also say again if the character entered is a or a, see out it's a in a vowel, or the character is e or e, it's e in a vowel, etc. on down with i, you know, etc. all the way down to o and u. So the most general form of decision making can be done with just an if else block. So it can certainly save a lot of code space and time in programming. So you still have your if, but you only have else, which means if the initial condition proves false, automatically the else condition gets tripped. So some brief examples of this. If x mod 2 is 0, the signal for an even number, see out it's even, or you can implicitly say, well, if that's false, it has to be odd. So hence, the else comes true. Or some really convoluted way of doing this is if none of these work, well, it's got to be a consonant. Otherwise, you can say, well, it's got to be a vowel. Speaking strictly in lowercase, of course. So it is possible to nest an if statement inside another and another and another, etc. So this means that a series of decisions can be made instead of just one. So a sample of that would be, say some number x is bigger than zero. Well, if the number is bigger than zero, you then next sequentially would check, well, if it's bigger than zero but it doesn't equal four, then you can do something, say, see on a message, good. Now, 
the else for the if x doesn't equal 4 will see out bad. It's not the else for x bigger than 0. So as you can see, the, the indentation of the code certainly will help you. And simply, if the number is less than equal to 0 would be the big else, you would see out ugly. So the best way to understand decisions, once again, is to practice with programs. So you will see that in the next part of the tutorial.